Hey, True Believers England team here with a discussion and I guess a little bit of a review of Ant-Man and the Wasp. Point being, okay, we know the movie's coming out, so they want to push Ant-Man and the Wasp, so they put out a couple of books. But you're going to see by the view count of this video that people don't give two shits about Ant-Man and the Wasp. Not saying the movie ain't going to do good. I mean, it's a Marvel movie, by all means. I'm sure it's going to just kick all sorts of ass. But how many comic book series have they tried with this guy? And it just failed. And this one in particular, Ant-Man and the Wasp, is Scott Lang and not Janet Van Dyne, but the uh, kid. I, I, I just read the book, and in all honesty, I forgot her name. But it's the daughter. The one that's like the 15th smartest person in the world, and because she's a modern-day woman, she's going to tell you that she's one of the smartest people in the world? Yeah, you have that going on. So the book's basically, it is Scott Lang's daughter's birthday. He's out in space. He wants to get home in time, so he talks to the wasp and says, Hey, beam me in. I need to go. I, I, want, I, want, I want you to get me to Earth. And he's got to hit this pocket in, in the right moment, the very right moment, or he could end up anywhere. Of course, he doesn't, and he ends up somewhere else. Just for expediency, we're going to call it Forgettable Planet number one. Okay, so whatever Van Dyne her name is, god damn it, I, shouldn't, I should figure it out before I do a review, right? I mean, you know, do some research, right? I don't know. Anyway, uh, daughter Van Dyne here, she goes looking for him. And she's, she's like, okay, I found you. I can't believe I found you. Here we are on this planet. And they notice that some people or some things, actually, they're little energy things, that are being crushed and, and uh, they, they're just not looking good. And they do a little exploration and find out there is something that seems to be absorbing these little energy things. And uh, Scott Lang's like, hey, we got to help these little energy things. And Van Dyne daughter says, Whoa, 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 we have no idea what this is. This could actually be part of the ecology. This could part, you know, be part of the, uh, the whole system. This is, this is the way white life could just work here. We don't know. And then they say, ah, screw it. Let's go attack it anyway. For a brief moment, I really like this book because that's so freaking smart. That's actually a smart thing for a smart person to say. You have no idea. What's going on on the planet? Why are you going to jump in and start fighting things as if one is good and one is bad? You have no idea how life works here. Why mess it up? That was very smart. And then they ended it because, you know, comic books have to have a fight, I guess. And it, uh, anyway, it, it was like they, gra they, they, they snatched defeat from the jaws of victory. You know, it was like almost a really good book. Or almost a good book, not a really good book. You know, let's not go overboard here or anything like that. It was decent enough. It's entertaining enough. Now, granted, this is the annoying wasp instead of Janet Van Dyne, the one we all know and love. This is the the one that had the whole series to tell us how smart she is and how smart everybody else is, including Mockingbird, who was never a genius until it was time to make every female in the Marvel Universe a genius. Oy. Actually, every character now. And I think they've got them ranked. Like, they, they for some reason, tested everybody. I'm the fifth, I'm the sixth, I'm the seventh smartest person. <laughs> yeah. This adds uh, potential even to be an incredibly good-looking book. But what starts off as a clever design ends up just being blotches. You know, this could have been a really colorful and like almost Kirby-esque kind of design. But instead, it just gets lazy in the middle. I don't know. It, this is such a Frankenstein of a book. Or a Jekyll and Hyde, I should say. Not Frankenstein, but Jekyll and Hyde. It's like, good, bad, good, bad, good, bad, all the way through it. Uh, Scott Lang is not supposed to be a moron yet in order to make uh, uh, the, the Pym daughter or Van Dyne daughter, whatever you want to call her, um, uh, look more like a genius. He's got to be dumber. So she, you know, and I don't ever like that kind of thing. You, you can have a smart character and other characters who are not dumb. 
You don't have to make one look bad to make the other look good. It's not a huge problem here, but it is a problem. At least probably a problem enough that I noticed it. But not problem enough to really derail the book. Like I said, this is an entertaining comic. This isn't a bad review. It's not going to... I'm not going to trash this one. It's not there. But I'm just saying, you know, they, they put out two books. And you're going to realize in just a little bit why I have a problem with what they did here as I go into the next one. I'm not a big fan of this particular Wasp. And I don't know too many people who are. This is the one that they put out the series. And, and generally it got panned. For the bad writing. Oh my gosh, the writing was bad. Art wasn't bad, but the, the writing was horrendous. Anyway, Ant-Man and the Wasp. What to think, what to say. Uh, fun, decent book. Flaws, glaring flaws, but nothing that really derails the entertainment. Is it worth the price of admission? Nope. No, I, if you can catch this in a little bit in somebody's bargain bin or a free pack, or a, a dollar bin, or whatever you get there, get it. But at full cover price, I would say caution, man. I'd either walk away or be very careful. And then we have Ant-Man and the Wasp Living Legends. All right, now we're going to get down to business. Now we're going to get a story starring Janet Van Dyne and Hank Pym. Talk about the legends. Talk about the ones we like. The Avengers, the ones that we enjoy, the ones we know, the classic characters. How many more times can I say? And it's written by Ralph Macchio, the karate kid himself. That man's been hearing that ever since the movie came out, I'm sure. That's like, oh, God, why? Why did that movie come out? I'm pretty sure that that, that has to be on his mind sometimes. Because, you know, I mean, come on. You would think, right? Anywho, uh, no, it's not that, that Ralph Macchio. So... And it's also not Hank Pym. That I have a big problem with. Because they go out of their way to say it a few times. That, oh no, I'm not that one. I'm not that Ant-Man. I'm the other Ant-Man. I'm Scott Lang. So, you don't really get the Ant-Man in, the, in Janet Van Dyne Living Legends. You get, uh, or, or Wasp, you get Scott Lang in both books. Which I thought, come on. Come on. You literally have a chance to do the originals. And you have a chance to do the legacy characters. And it would have been fine. You could have, and this story could have been told in the past. You don't have to do what is it, Ultimate Ultra, Ultron Pym or whatever, Pym Ultron, whatever he is now. Yeah, Marvel, what the freaking hell are you guys thinking? So, anyway, there's this uh, planet, and it, they had a rebellion. And they, let's see, what, what is it? His name was. Uh, Alzar from planet Thaloom in Dimension Z that a long time ago in Tales to Astonish, the Wasp and Giant Man went to this planet. They had to fight this guy. There was this thing called the Eraser, which could teleport people or erase them out of existence. And uh, they ended up sparking a rebellion. And now they're in trouble again. This this planet is in trouble. So they called on their heroes. Please come and help us because the uh, there's an evil dictator now. And we're still in... Uh, when, when you left, there was uh, a vacuum and the evil dictator took the place. And we're still in at war. We're still in this rebellion. So uh, the Wasp and the Ant-Man go flying back to take care of business again. And the biggest problem with it not being Hank Pym is this book really does feel like a Silver Age comic. It really does. Ralph Macchio steps out and does his business. Man, he is, he is definitely dressed up and ready to go today. Just by the writing of this book, I, I can tell you, it is so entertaining. It's so much fun. It's absolutely a Silver Age story that's just been modernized. And it fa falls, in my opinion... Because, or fails, it doesn't really fail because it is a fun book, but it falls because it's Scott Lang and not Hank Pym. It's the living legends. It should be them. It should be the familiars. And what, what happens? Scott Lang is put in that same dolt position that he was in uh, with the original, the, in the Ant-Man and the Wasp. He's just a doofus through these two. And I understand that Ant-Man is a comedy, but come on, treat your lead with some respect. 
and Hank Pym would have been respectful. It would have been cool. But overall, I gotta say, it did not, it did not affect my enjoyment of the book at all. I mean, well, no, that's not true. It didn't. It didn't make it. I, I just kind of contradicted myself. But it did affect my enjoyment. But it's still a fun book, I should say. This one, I would recommend. This one, I think you'll have fun with. The the Ant Man and the Wasp, not so much. But the Living Legend one, I, I think, is a lot more entertaining. It's better written. It's smart. It's smarter. It's just, uh, it's just the way they treat the Ant Man character in both books that kind of bother me. And I don't mind a, a jokester, but you don't make need to make the guy stupid. And he does come off a little bit of as as a doofus instead of a smartass or somebody who knows what he's talking about. Uh, uh let's see. Yeah, I mean, I, that, I guess that's all I have. That's all I have about these two. Uh, Living Legends is better than Ant-Man and the Wasp. Neither one of them are going to blow the doors off, and I would recommend that you get them at a discount rather than full price. <laughs>